Our scripture today is from John chapter 15, verses 12 to 17. As you think about the, the scripture and listen carefully, uh, Jesus talks about our friends. And at this special time, we really are thinking of the friends we're missing, our Three Willows friends. So please remember, we're all still there. And if you need anything, call us. So these are Jesus' words. Jesus said, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. If there's one thing to be said about this um, pandemic that we all find ourselves in, it's a great way of separating what is essential from what is non-essential. Food, health, healthcare workers, Frontline workers of all sorts, yes, absolutely essential. Hockey players, celebrities, those with big eagles, not at all essential. And then on the home front, we know what's precious now. Touch, a hug, a smile, a kindness, or the sense of being able to, and the longing to sit down and have a coffee with a neighbor or with a friend. Family friends, neighbors, essential part of our lives. When Jesus gathered with his disciples uh, that last night in the upper room, where they shared what we call now um, the Lord's Supper. Uh, there was a long teaching section that we have, not teaching really, but a long section of dialogue uh, and teaching of a kind uh, at the end of John's Gospel, which we call the Farewell Discourses. They're hard to um, categorize in a way, but there's some very memorable phrases that have become part of our uh, grounding as Christians, essential kind of words that we hold on to. Love one another as I have loved you. Abide in me. I will not leave you desolate, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. And I will pray that the Father will send an advocate or comforter to be with you forever. And then there are these words. I call you friends. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends. It seems to me that Jesus wants to move these disciples in that, those last hours from a relationship of where he has the agency and the authority to a mutuality that we understand immediately when we think of friends as opposed to Lord or teacher or rabbi. There's a desire for a collapsing of those hierarchies and a desire for closeness on the part of Jesus. Now, I don't want to overstate that or simplify it where Jesus simply becomes our buddy. That would never be the understanding that we have in John's Gospel. But on the other hand, it seems so often we want to make Jesus so special, so distant from us, such a powerful figure and distant Lord 
that we miss this shift that happens for Jesus as he gathers with his disciples for the last time. I call you friends. So let's take a little look at friendship because it seems so ordinary in one way, but when Jesus gets us thinking about it, or when we think about what it means to be a friend with Jesus, when we see the way he is friends with his disciples over those past years, there's something about friendship that becomes not ordinary at all, but quite extraordinary. So what perhaps can we learn from this? Well, first, it's been said by a wise person that we do not choose our friends, rather we find them. We don't choose them, but we find each other. Think of that in maybe the friendships that you hold dearest. Perhaps it was a person that said hello to you when you first came into the church or into a classroom. Or you sat down beside when your kids were playing soccer together. Isn't our friendship with God and with Jesus sometimes like that too? Where we suddenly feel that there's a presence. There's something beckoning us into a deeper relationship. There's some openness that invites us in. And that's how friendship begins. That's how friendship with God begins. We try to make it so special sometimes. We try to make it so awe-inspiring that we miss something of the simplicity that I think Jesus is inviting us to connect with. Second, it seems to me that friendship suggests openness as well as vulnerability. Someone we can let our hair down with. A friend is someone that we can share with honestly, trusting that they can see us not only on our good days, but also our bad days. Jesus says to the disciples that night, I've told you everything that I know about God. He is bared his soul completely for the disciples. That's the kind of openness and vulnerability that Jesus exemplifies in his friendship with his disciples. Another thing it seems to me about friendship is that it requires honesty. There's a Jewish proverb that says that a friend is someone who warns us, cautions us, there's a story that I heard about a minister who was a very fine minister and a fine preacher, but became more and more arrogant and more and more out of touch with some rather strange behavior. And this caused the elders of the church to puzzle and wonder what was going on that was seeming to uh, uh, shake this person from the person that they had originally known. And after some prayerful consideration, they realized that this man perhaps had no friends, no one to warn him, no one to laugh at him, poke fun, burst his bubble of ego, no one to warn him, someone to keep, help him keep perspective. And we know what a gift and blessing that is. Sometimes it's really hard when a friend warns us or cautions us. But inevitably, we appreciate the love where it comes from. The other thing that I think we can learn about friendship is that it takes time and energy and even at times self-sacrifice. We all know of people who swear friendship, but they never seem to have time for us. Um, we know that that's really not true friendship as we would understand it. Jesus takes time with his disciples. He takes time to nourish them, to care for them, to learn, to teach them, and be their mentor and guide. That's what endears them to him. I don't know about you, but I've been picking up the phone and calling some people I haven't talked to for a long time, realizing how precious some of those old term, long term friends have been and how, you know, it's been a while since I've talked to them and I need to pick the phone up and, and chat. 
the challenge for the church is that when we're in community, it's a challenging place to be. People come desiring friendship as well as a community of neighbors and a community of fellow believers. They're looking for friendship, and that too requires energy and commitment on the part of us all. And yet, it seems to me that that's why Jesus calls us friends, so that we can in turn be friends with each other. I like, I, I love the term that the Quakers use for their church, Society of Friends. Wonderful. One of the most wonderful movies I've seen this year, it's an ordinary, extraordinary movie about the essentials of life, friendship and neighborliness, was Tom Hanks's portrayal of Mr. Rogers in the movie called A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. I can't think of a movie that is more necessary and essential for these rather cynical times. The story revolves around Mr. Rogers and a cynical, high-powered Esquire writer named Lloyd Vogel, who thinks it beneath him to go and do a story on a children's TV personality. Vogel goes looking for a story. Mr. Rogers goes to seek and nurture a relationship and a friendship. And as the movie unfolds, the hurt child in Vogel is laid bare by this friendship that begins to develop with Mr. Rogers. It's a remarkable movie and there's a remarkable moment in that movie sets that takes place in a Chinese restaurant in Pittsburgh and they're sitting down to have lunch together and Mr. Rogers stops and says to Vogel just take a moment a minute 60 seconds to consider all the people who have loved you into being Vogel is dismissive, as if to say there are none in my life. But Mr. Rogers wisely responds, they will come to you. And for the next 60 seconds in the movie, there is silence. And the camera pans around the restaurant as we see people pausing, as if they too have been asked this question. And then the movie camera goes up again and we see Mr. Rogers and it's as if he too is asking us that question. Who were the ones who loved us into being? And as he looked out, everyone in the movie theater, including me, was asking that question and those faces came to me as well as it came to others in the movie theater because you could feel it. All of us were remembering those, love, those who loved us into being. I've never had quite an experience like it in the movie theater and I'd highly recommend the movie to you. And so when Jesus promises to come to us. He comes to love us into being, love us into the fullness of life and love that God wants for each human being on this planet. And in a strange way, in a mysterious way, our faith says that indeed Jesus does come to us Time, space is of no impediment for Jesus. And when we are locked away from other friends, strangely, mysteriously, wonderfully, Jesus can come through locked doors and barred windows and hardened hearts. And when we think we have made such a sorry mess of our life that no one, no one would want to be our friend anymore. We know that Jesus 
comes and seeks us out. Some of us know that personally, and we believe that it can be there for everyone because Jesus shows no partiality in his love. And when we are locked in an ICU unit, separated from family and friends, dying of COVID-19, our friend Jesus comes mysteriously, wonderfully to hold our hand, to whisper comforts in the night, and sometimes even hold up a phone or an iPad so we can hear loved ones remind us and speak to us that they too have loved us into being. Knowing that there is no end to the way Jesus comes, calls us friends, calls us into being, calls us home. Amen.